In today's video, we are going to explore a visual representation of numbers in terms of their prime factors. This representation is intuitive and simple, and it makes visualizing the structure of numbers and their factors really easy. Let's go. If we want to see how many factors a number has got, its prime factorization is absolutely crucial. But today we're going to look at a more visual representation to really seeing why numbers have a certain amount of factors. First of all, then, we're going to start with 27, and it is vital that we factorise it first into its prime factorisation, which for 27 is just 3 to the power of 3. This is a nice first example because it just has one prime factor. So first thing then, we always want to draw a number line. For 27, it's got one prime factor, which is three, and there's three powers of it. Our number lines always need to start with one. But this isn't quite a normal number line. Each time we go along one jump in our number line, we're going to be multiplying. And because we've got three as our base, we need to multiply by three. So one jump, we're gonna do one multiplied by three to get to three. The next jump on our number line, we need to do three multiplied by three to get nine. And the next jump, we need to do nine multiplied by three to get 27. And we can ignore this little bit hanging off the end as well if we like. So what we've seen here then is to get from 1 to 27, we have to multiply 1 to 3 times by 3. Great, that's the information that the prime factorisation told us. But actually we get some nice information about the number of factors of 27. It's just the number of nodes or the number of dots on our number line as we go. So you can see here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 of those nodes, and that means that 27 has got 4 factors. So its factors we know are 1, 3, 9 and 27, but actually we could have got those just by counting up the number of nodes on our number line. Okay, that's a really simple example, but looking at a number like 36, well there's a bit more going on here. 36, when we take its prime factorisation, be 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. And at this point, well, our number line doesn't really work anymore, because we can either choose to multiply up in powers of 2, or we could multiply up in powers of three. The important thing with prime factors is that they can't mingle between each other. You can't start mixing powers of two and powers of three up. We've got a really clever way of getting around this though, which is to introduce a new axis. So first of all, I'm just gonna represent my axes like this. My x axis is going to be my 2 axis, and my y axis is going to be my 3 axis. So now when I draw my number line, my 2 to the power of 2, well I always know that I start off with 1, and when I go to 2 to the power of 1, because coming along to the right is my 2 axis, I'm going to get 2, and then times in by 2 again, I get to 4. Now I can look at my 3 axis, which is 3 to the power of 2. So this means I need to go up, also 2 nodes, on my number line in this direction. So when I go up 1, I'm multiplying by 3. That was my 3 axis. So I'll get to 3. Up another one, I'll get to 9. Here's the really awesome part. That 36 is going to be over here. 
it's like a point on a coordinate graph at this point. And what we can do is fill in all of these missing numbers to get to 36. So I'm going to fill in this 2D shape at this point. And we just think back to our number line to help us find the missing numbers. Here I was at 2, and each time I go up, I have to multiply by 3. So 2 times 3 would get me 6 in here. And then multiplying by 3 again, because I'm going up another step, 6 times 3 would get me 18. Well now I've got two ways to go about this. I could either start from 6 and multiply by 2 to get 12, or I could start from 4 and multiply by 3 to get 12. So that number there is going to be 12. And then lastly, I could either do 18 times by 2, because I'm moving to the right one to get 36, or I could have done 12 multiplied by 3 to get 36. What's cool for us is that it's completely path independent. You can go whichever path you feel like, and you'll get to 36 as long as you follow the rules of times by 2 and times by 3 on those axes. Well, counting up the number of factors then is really easy. Again, we just count up the number of nodes or the number of meeting points of lines that we see on our graph. So we've got here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means 36 has got nine factors. Looking at one more tricky example then, 240. And 240 has got even more prime factors. It's got some powers of two. So it's got two to the power of four. It's also got a three to the power of one. And it's also got a five to the power of one. And if you're thinking as we go through this video, or we had a one dimensional example, it was one dimensional because it just had one prime factor. We had a two dimensional example because it had two prime factors. So now we're going to have to have a three dimensional shape for our example with three distinct prime factors. Following our thinking again means that we should choose one actor, uh, one axis for the factors of 2, one axis for the factors of 3, and one axis for the factors of 5. So let's represent up here what we're going to do. I'm going to change colour so that we don't disturb everything over here too much. So starting off then, just with 2D, we're going to stick with what we had. So we're going to use the x-axis for factors of 2, the y-axis is going to be used for factors of 3. And now we're going to use our z-axis, which is going 3D like this, back into the board. That's going to be for our factors of 5. Well, again, using our number line idea then, let's start off with powers of 2. There's four of those powers of 2. So if we start down here, we can start from 1. And we're going to have 2, 4, 8, and 16. Great, that's all the powers of 2 used up. Each time it's doubling, we're happy. Let's now think about our powers of 3, and there's just one of them. So what that means for us is that we just have one upward step to here, and that takes us to 3. At this point, I think it's a nice idea to fill in all of the points that we know will have to be in here. So I can draw this line across, this line down, and fill in these lines because these are going to have to be later on factors of 240. Thinking about the numbers that they have to be, we'd have to have 6 here, so I'm going to put a 6 in because we went along to 2 and then up multiplying by 3. 4 times by 3 would get us 12. 8 times by 3 to get us 24. And 16 times by 3 to get us 48. 
Okay, let's continue on then. We filled in our three axis and our two axis at this point. We still need to do our five axis, which is the 3D one going backwards into the page. And to do this, well, we've just got one power of five. So that means we just need one backwards step. So I'm going to try and do this in dotted lines so it's not super messy this way, but something like this. We've got that. We need to also do it from each of these points though. So another one. Okay, that looks reasonable enough. Now we can fill in this line here. And what I'm hoping that this shows us is that this is the base of, of our shape, isn't it? We're going to have a cuboid shape forming, but each time we travel along one of these diagonal lines, we multiply by five. So if we fill in some of these missing numbers, we're going to have one times five here. So one times five to give us five, two times five here to give us 10 at this point, four times five to give us 20. 8 times 5 to give us 40, and 16 times 5 to give us 80. You can really start to see some nice patterns now as well, because as we travel along this axis, obviously it still obeys the rules of multiplying by 2 when we move to the right. Now let's fill in the back side of our cuboid. So we've, if you see here, we've got this point. Let's draw a vertical line coming up from that point, and that's where our cuboid is going to meet up here, isn't it? So this is the far left face of our cuboid. Now we can fill in the top side. And we've got this here, we can go down to there. So you can see now our cuboid shape has sort of emerged out of this graph. We've got some more points to fill in though, haven't we? We've got here, here, and here. This is the top of our cuboid, and we need to follow the convention of multiplying by five as we move back into our page, going this way. So three times five, we get 15. Six times five to get 30. 12 times five to get 60. Uh, 24 times five to get 120 and 48 times five should get us 240. That is what we want. This is all of our points filled in then now. And what's key for us, this line here should actually be a solid line, one of the edges of our cuboid. What's important for us is the number that we want is always going to be in the far back right. Same here, that was 36 was the number that we wanted. And same for this one, it's as far away from the origin as possible. Another nice detail here is of course that all of the factors are contained within this cuboid. They're all of the nodes of our cuboid. So it's really easy to count them up to check how many factors 240 has got. And in this case, we can see it's one, two, three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 factors. Once we've represented it as a 3D cuboid, or a 2D shape, or even a one-dimensional line, really, really easy and intuitive to count up those factors. For some homework, you could try representing 324 and also 1,800 using this representation. What shapes do they make and how many factors have they got? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.